Yeah. What are we doing, man? Let's talk about this guy. Yeah, let's let's, let's talk about Puff. Now, do you go you go to the shows? You check yeah, him out? Yeah, I've been to two of the concerts. Yeah. Two of the concerts. Tan it up. Yeah. Now, were you there the night he fell? Because I heard one night what you fell. What show was that? <laughs> that, was, that was at the Garden. At the Garden. You know why? Because when you're in your hometown, you're like a fight. You try to give this one. No. And you always want to lose in us, but <laughs> But yeah. yeah. This is your little fruit. But Puff is a fruit pile. <laughs> <laughs> it's your yeah, fruit pile. Trust yeah. me. Yeah. You see these little weird ass and shit yeah. like that out there. I'm just sitting out there for no reason. Yo, like, you don't see accident bitches with me like kissing me. Yeah, like that doesn't happen by accident. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm telling you. Yes, I'm yeah. telling you. Look, look. Later you gonna find out a little shit that I'll be saying. Oh, <laughs> the government likely has a very strong case against Diddy. They don't execute these types of search warrants until they have talked to witnesses, have gathered evidence, and they believe they have an ironclad case. In a jaw-dropping turn of events, the worlds of boxing and hip-hop collide as boxing legend Mike Tyson drops a bombshell that sent shockwaves through the industry. In a move that has everyone on the edge of their seats, Tyson has leaked never-before-seen footage from none other than Diddy's CCTV cameras. But what secrets lie hidden within these elusive tapes? Prepare to delve deep into the clandestine world of two titans as we uncover the truth behind closed doors. Strap in because this ride is about to get wilder than a heavyweight bout. First, let's see what's going on with Diddy, and then later we'll refresh your memory when it comes to Diddy and his connection with the boxing legend, Mike Tyson. So, Diddy's big comeback took a serious hit with lawsuits and federal raids swirling around him, dragging one of America's music giants into the murky world of trafficking allegations. Last September, when Diddy dropped hints about his comeback album, he talked about renaming himself Love and teased his new project, the Love album Off the Grid, to GQ. He said he felt disconnected from Love, and needed to find his way back, claiming God, who he sees as a woman, gave him the nudge. But if there's divine intervention at play, it sure seems like it's got nothing to do with his music. Multiple claims of trafficking and abuse, along with federal agents raiding his homes in LA and Miami, paint a pretty grim picture. Since the raids of his Miami and Los Angeles homes amid a trafficking probe, Sean Diddy Combs is being spotted out and about in South Florida. CBS News Miami's Nakai Carrero is showing us where Diddy has been. Instead of basking in his comeback glory, Diddy's reputation is taking a serious hit. He's not being talked about in the same breath as hip-hop legends anymore. Now, it's more like disgraced stars like R. Kelly and Harvey Weinstein. The recent raids on his homes were part of an ongoing investigation into trafficking. People were reportedly cuffed, including Diddy's sons, and some associates got into trouble with drug charges at the airport where Diddy's jet landed. Diddy himself was spotted talking to agents before jetting off to Antigua, but he didn't join the family vaque, and his whereabouts are a mystery. He hasn't been arrested or charged and he's denied all allegations in the past. His lawyer, Aaron Dyer, slammed the raids, saying they were overkill and his kids and employees were treated unfairly. But these dramatic raids come hot on the heels of a lawsuit filed by music producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones, who accuses Diddy of running a criminal trafficking operation. Jones claims he was forced into soliciting adult industry workers and performing various lovemaking acts for Diddy. The lawsuit even suggests that Diddy's celebrity connections added credibility to these alleged swing-like parties dropping names like Prince Harry, though he's not accused of anything. The recent raids are just the latest blow in a string of serious allegations aimed at Diddy. Last November, his ex-partner Cassie Ventura filed a whopping $30 million lawsuit in New York, accusing him of pressuring her into performing acts with male sex workers while he recorded, and even alleging he assaulted and raped her in 2018. Diddy denied Ventura's claims and settled the lawsuit the next day for an undisclosed sum. His former lawyer, Ben Braffman, said Diddy vehemently denies everything, but that wasn't the end of it. Joey Dickerson Neal then came forward, accusing Diddy of drugging and sexually assaulting her back in the early 90s when she was in college and he was with Uptown Records, the label that launched Mary J. Blige and Jodeci. In another lawsuit, an anonymous woman accused Diddy and two others of f***ing her in the early 90s, right after he founded Bad Boy Records, the label behind Notorious Big, Usher, Faith Evans, and 112. And there's more. A fourth lawsuit claimed Diddy drugged and f***ed the girl in 2003 when she was just 17. This was around the time Diddy was all over the hip-hop scene with his Sean John clothing line, fragrances, and venturing into spirits with Kyrock Vodka and DeLeon Tequila. Like other big names caught up in the Hash Me Too movement, there's a feeling that Diddy's sketchy behavior towards women wasn't exactly a secret. Throughout Diddy's career, there have been hints that his flashy style of hip-hop capitalism
capitalism had some serious flaws that many just overlooked. When Diddy made his mark in New York society with those epic all-white parties starting in the Hamptons in 98 and eventually hitting spots like St. Tropez and Beverly Hills, Paris Hilton dubbed him a modern-day Gatsby. He even graced the pages of Vogue, rubbing shoulders with Kate Moss in Paris. Anna Wintour herself contributed to a spoken word bit on one of his albums with his group Diddy Dirty Money. But as far back as a decade earlier, rock writer Cynthia Fuchs noted that the hypester hustler supreme version of Diddy had overstayed his welcome. During the notorious East Coast-West Coast rap beef of the 90s, which saw the deaths of Tupac Shakur and Biggie Smalls, Diddy tried to play the tough guy, maybe a little too hard. Diddy grew up in Harlem, losing his father when he was just three. Raised in Mount Vernon, he had a pretty comfortable middle-class upbringing, went to a private Catholic school in the Bronx, then studied business at Howard University, and hustled his way into a job at Andre Harrell's Uptown Records. But signs of Diddy's overreach were there from early on. In 91, a stampede at a basketball game he promoted left seven people dead. And then there was that bizarre incident in 99 when he and his crew barged into Steve Stout's office and things got violent. There's always been a bit of trouble surrounding Diddy. Some of it comes with the territory, but some of it speaks to how you're doing business. Lately, cracks have been showing in Diddy's diamond-studded, champagne-soaked lifestyle. Last year, he took on the British spirits giant Diageo, accusing them of neglecting their joint ventures and racism. Diageo fired back, calling his claims false and reckless. They settled in January, with Diageo taking full control of the brands. But with federal authority stepping in, Diddy's story might be taking a darker turn. You know, I had to give a nod to oh the Godfather. Oh my God, look at you. Mm. I had to this give a nod cool. to the Godfather. But you're giving us a futuristic James Brown moment on the shoulders. Mm. Hardest working man in showbiz. Diddy's been making moves in all sorts of places since forever, whether he's ruling the streets of NYC hip hop or mingling at the Met Gala. That's so, you know, I mean, um. That's fat. <laughs> With a PH. Yeah. And you can even say you can even say that's hot. You've seen him everywhere, from big time meetings to your TV screen, flashing that million dollar smile while guest hosting on Live with Regis and Kelly. According to Jason King, the big shot over at USC's music school and a guru on black music culture, Diddy's been a heavyweight in the black music scene since way back in the 90s. He's like the Donald Trump of celebrity performers and entrepreneurs, with that flashy, charming vibe that hides who knows what. But Diddy's impact on hip hop is massive, and nobody can deny that. He's the guy who took it from underground to global domination. Starting off as an intern at Andre Harrell's Uptown Records, he launched Bad Boy Records in 93 with the legendary Clive Davis backing him. And man, did he know talent? Just check out the roster he put together. Biggie, Mace, Faith Evans, The Locks, 112, the list goes on. Never one to shy away from the spotlight, Diddy made sure he wasn't just behind the scenes. Nah, he stepped right up as an A-list artist and performer. With a whopping 15 top 10 hits, whether he was writing, producing, or spitting rhymes himself, he owned the charts. Who could forget I'll Be Missing You? That tribute to Biggie with the police sample, it stayed on top of the charts for a whopping 11 weeks back in 97. But Diddy didn't stop there. He played a big role in shaping the careers of artists like Machine Gun Kelly, French Montana, and Janelle Monae. Shoot, Janelle even got a Grammy nom for Album of the Year with her album The Age of Pleasure, released through Bad Boy Atlantic in 2023. Jason King sums it up perfectly. Diddy's like Barry Gordy from Motown. He wasn't just about the music, he was all about the brand. And that fusion of black music and branding, it changed the whole game, setting the stage for stars like Beyonce and Pharrell Williams. Always hustling, in 98, Diddy launched his own fashion line, Sean John. Fast forward to 2016, he cashed in big, selling off most of the brand for a reported $70 million. But that's not all. Diddy dipped his toes into TV too, producing MTV's Making the Band. And let's not forget the gems that came out of that show, Danity Kane and Day 26 Anyone. Then in 2007, he struck gold with Diageo, the British drinks giant, to promote Ciroc, the premium vodka brand. Diageo's coughed up nearly $1 billion to Diddy over the years for his efforts, according to the company. And in 2013, he co-founded Revolt TV, a whole cable network and multimedia empire. Bad Boy wasn't just about the music, it was a lifestyle. It showed artists they could do way more than just make beats. They could dive into fashion, fragrances, heck, they could even build their own empires. But despite crafting an image of a street-smart CEO who hustled his way to the top, Diddy's personal life seemed to have a shadow of violence hanging over it. Back in 91, chaos erupted at an AIDS fundraiser he organized 
organized at City College of New York, resulting in nine tragic deaths due to a stampede. Then, in 99, he faced assault charges after an altercation with Interscope Records exec Steve Stout, later pleading guilty to harassment. That same year, trouble brewed again when a shooting occurred at a Manhattan club where Diddy was partying with then-girlfriend Jennifer Lopez and bad boy artist Shine. While Diddy walked away from gun possession and bribery charges, Shine ended up with a 10-year prison sentence. Jump to 2012, when Cassie's lawsuit alleged that Diddy threatened to blow up rapper Kid Cootie's car, suspecting Cassie and Cootie were a thing. Lo and behold, Cootie's car blew up around that time. In 2015, Diddy found himself in hot water again after allegedly attacking his son Justin's college football coach with a kettlebell weight, although charges were eventually dropped, and the hits keep on coming. Former Bad Boy associates have come out with their own stories of violence, including allegations of assault against women and business partners. In 2003, Kirk Burroughs, former president of Bad Boy Entertainment, sued Diddy, claiming he was forced to sign over his shares with a baseball bat in hand. Burroughs also recalled an incident in 94, where Diddy allegedly attacked a woman at the Bad Boy offices, leaving behind a shattered glass table. While Diddy's rep declined to comment on these allegations, they paint a troubling picture of his past. Burroughs, having been in the thick of it, didn't hold back in his support of Cassie and the other accusers. Cassie is a hero to everyone who has been devastated by Sean Diddy, he declared. He admitted to being swayed by Diddy's charm initially, but soon learned the true cost of associating with him. Meanwhile, Michelle Joyce and LaJoyce Brookshire, who both worked at Bad Boy Arista during the mid-90s, were shocked by the accusations. Joyce, Bad Boy's inaugural marketing director, recalled how 80% of the staff at Bad Boy were women during her time there, highlighting the strong female voices in the mix. Brookshire echoed Joyce's sentiments, lamenting the tarnishing of their hard-earned legacy. She reminisced about the fast-paced, high-pressure environment under Diddy, like getting a call on a Monday to throw together a lavish white party by Saturday. Just a typical whirlwind experience at Bad Boy. Reflecting on the fallout, Joyce shared her sadness and the collective despondency among former colleagues. Despite the stain on their legacy, she emphasized the lasting impact of their work in shaping hip-hop history. As Diddy's life story unfolds, it's clear that he's navigated through highs and lows, from shaping the landscape of hip-hop to facing controversies and legal battles. Yet his influence extends beyond the music industry alone. In a curious twist of fate, another iconic figure, Mike Tyson, emerges into the narrative. Both Diddy and Tyson embody resilience, having weathered storms of their own. While Diddy carved his path through the music and entertainment world, Tyson's journey epitomizes the tumultuous nature of sports and fame. Their intersecting paths offer a glimpse into the complexities of celebrity culture, where triumphs and tribulations intertwine, shaping the narrative of modern-day icons. Um, I don't know when I'm coming back. I'm just, I'm into, I have so many different ventures, and I'm, I, I'm into the music business now. Are you really? Yeah. And hopefully Puffy helped me out, you know. <laughs> So, there's this recent YouTube video that's got everyone buzzing about Mike Tyson and Diddy. Apparently, they were caught doing something pretty bizarre. Now, you know, Diddy and Tyson go way back, right? But this video's got people thinking maybe there's more to their friendship. Fans are speculating if Diddy might have invited Tyson into his bed, even though they've been buddies for ages. But here's the thing. The connection between Diddy and Tyson has always been kind of different, you know? And word on the street is, Diddy wasn't always cool with Tyson's touch. Some folks are saying Tyson might have been taking advantage of the rumors swirling around Diddy's personal life. And let me tell you, there have been plenty of those. See, people have been curious about Tyson's personal stuff for a while now, especially after some recent chatter about him being gay. Tyson's been through a lot of ups and downs, from biting ears in the ring to battling with substance abuse. But it's not just his boxing that's got people talking. There have been whispers about his sexuality too. Now Tyson ain't one to shy away from controversy. He's been known to speak his mind. Like that time he confronted rapper Boozy about some comments he made. Boozy was mouthing off about Dwayne Wade's kid, and Tyson wasn't happy. Having it. He straight up asked Boozy why he was dissing people just cause they might be gay. And you know what? Tyson even hinted that maybe Boozy's got some hidden feelings himself. He got fired. <laughs> oh no. Can you oh, imagine man. Mike Tyson calls you up and says, give me my fucking car oh, back yeah. the ranch. So awesome. That's a cool ass box, man. Yeah, Tyson Ranch is gonna be opening up pretty shortly. Which uh state? It's it's in California. It's really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be the best um facility in the world, man. How about some man, some tigers and shit? Put some wild animals. I love embarking on Later, this brother. cannabis stuff. Say, what does it do for you? Hey, man, um, if I didn't, I have a bad day. You know, I've never been a person to this. It was very uptight. I didn't, I used to, I was very uncomfortable with myself. And I came across that and um, I, I smoked this, um, I don't know, this medicine, drug, whatever you want to call it. And, stuff. and um, look at life different. I look at people differently. 
and um, an experience I can't even express, really. But here's the kicker. Tyson's been through his own journey of self-discovery. He's talked openly about his past struggles with self-hatred and how he's changed. He even admitted that at one point in his life, he was like Boozy, spewing hate without really knowing why. And let's not forget the drama with Diddy. You know, the whole thing about him possibly being gay, 50 Cent's been stirring the pot, as usual, claiming Diddy's fruity and all that. He's doing it, I'm going... Puff was like, yeah, like first he was here for him to, to right. get stout. Then he was like, yo, he's like, yo, so yo, when we gonna get the chance to, you know, to kick it, like we can just hang out, nigga. We gotta, we gotta Hold kick that. it. This is Puff, this. okay. He telling me we gotta kick it. And he was like, right. yo, why don't we like go shopping? Or shit? I mean, like I pay for it. And I was like, what the this is just say? <laughs> <laughs> I got the <laughs> away from him because I was like, this nigga, <laughs> this nigga just tell me he take me shopping. <laughs> Even Wendy Williams has jumped in on the gossip train, hinting that there might be more to Diddy than meets the eye. But hey, Diddy's never confirmed or denied any of it. Guess we'll just have to wait and see if he's ready to spill the tea or keep us guessing. And as for Tyson, well, despite all the rumors, he's been married three times. So, who knows what's really going on behind the scenes? All right, let's break down the recent developments. So, Daphne Joy, caught up in a custody battle with her ex-50 Cent, threw some serious accusations his way after he teased her about being labeled a worker in a lawsuit against Diddy. But Fiddy was quick to shut that down. Now let's talk about this lawsuit from Diddy's producer Lil Rod. It's a massive 105-page complaint full of shady claims about Diddy and his crew. Drama's been brewing since February, and it got an update this week with some major raids at Diddy's fancy pads in Homeby Hills in Miami. The feds are poking around into Diddy's business over some heavy <laughs> trafficking allegations, and it's sending shockwaves through the industry, pulling in everyone from Diddy's son to big shot record label bosses to even Prince Harry. The lawsuit spills some juicy details, claiming Diddy was splashing cash on a bunch of women for some shady business. They're calling out names like Daphne Joy, Young Miami, Diddy's ex, and Instagram model Jade Ramey as the ladies getting paid. Lil Rod's not holding back with his dollar thirty million harassment lawsuit, pointing fingers at these women as part of Diddy's sketchy dealings. But hold up, Daphne ain't having it. She took to Instagram to clap back, saying she's deeply hurt by the lies in Lil Rod's lawsuit and slamming the claim that she's a worker as 100% false. She's lawyering up and ready to throw down against Lil Rod and his attorney. I am deeply hurt by the lies in Rodney Jones's lawsuit. The claim that I am a worker is 100% false and character assassination. I am retaining an attorney to explore all legal remedies against both Rodney and his attorney. And as for Diddy, well, he's standing firm, denying all the allegations flying around in that lawsuit, along with a bunch brought by four other women. His lawyers calling it all complete lies. But wait, there's more drama. Old rival 50 Cent could couldn't resist stirring the pot. He hopped on Twitter, dropping a cheeky line. They don't come like that unless they got a case. And he didn't stop there. Fiddy threw shade by posting what looked like a sneaky paparazzi shot of his ex with Diddy, trolling Joy by calling her a little s worker in the caption. Classic 50 move, right? He even used one of Combs' many aliases. Now it's not Diddy do it, it's Diddy done. They don't come like that unless they got a case. You moved a mile away in hopes of having another baby with me, but I was busy. So you moved back, and then you started receiving money from Brother Love. Now here we are, little worker. Joy came back swinging though, but let's backtrack a bit. See, back in 2013, 50 Cent showed up in court, pleading not guilty to some serious charges of domestic violence and vandalism after a heated incident with Joy. It was messy, with allegations flying and restraining orders issued. So Joy's laying it all out, saying she made the move to New York to give Jackson a chance to be a real dad to their son. But despite being practically neighbors for two years, she's claiming that the rapper barely showed up, only making about 10 visits. She's not holding back, calling out Jackson for dropping the ball on his dad duties and throwing some heavy accusations his way. She's accusing him of some serious stuff and physical abuse. She's had enough of the facade and says she's putting her faith in higher powers to handle him from here on out. But wait, 50 Cent's not taking this lying down. Through a spokesperson, he's coming out swinging, denying every single one of Joy's claims. He's hitting back hard, saying these allegations are just her way of retaliating because he's seeking sole custody of their son. He's making it crystal clear. His kid's his top priority, and he's dead set on keeping him safe. 
Fast forward to now, Joy's hitting back at 50's trolling. She's calling him out for putting her safety at risk and accusing him of neglecting their son. She's not holding back, throwing some heavy accusations his way, but 50's firing back, denying all her claims and focusing on protecting their kid. And that's the latest from the drama zone, folks. Buckle up, because it looks like things are heating up even more. In the midst of all this drama, one thing's for sure. Tensions are running high between Joy and Jackson, with accusations flying left and right. But as they duke it out, it's important to remember that there's always more to the story than meets the eye. And hey, speaking of eye-opening revelations, let's not forget about that bombshell dropped by Mike Tyson, who recently leaked footage from Diddy's CCTV cameras. While we're left scratching our heads over what that could mean, one thing's clear. In the world of celebrities, scan Scandals and surprises are never too far away. So, as the dust settles and the gossip mill churns on, let's keep our eyes peeled for the next jaw-dropping twist in this saga. After all, in the world of fame and fortune, anything can happen.